One day, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I think about that as I was out last night and just kind of taking the dogs out and I looked up and I said, you know what? I said, there's a new star up there. And I said, Charlie, I said, look, you got your star, you're shining bright, amen. Hallelujah. And how many know one day, whether Jesus Christ comes back in our lifetime or we go by the grave, we have that blessed assurance that knowing that death has no hold on us. And David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For it's your rod and your staff, amen, that comforts me. So we, we have that blessed assurance. And Brother Max, thank you so, so, so much, amen. Hallelujah. Because that wasn't just for Charlie, that was for me, amen. Hallelujah. I want to take you to the book of Psalms this morning. We'll be going to Psalms 118, and I just want to welcome each and every one of you that are joining us uh, through video, joining us uh, live, that we want you to understand that we, amen, consider it an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to bring the Word of God to you. And, and no matter what you're going through, Jesus Christ is the answer to your problems. And we want you to understand that the truth is so valuable it cannot be bought with gold and silver. Amen. The truth is only found in the Word of God, which has been provided through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want today to be the first day for the rest of your life. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. And amen. Psalm 118, verse 1, if you'll stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Verse 4 says, Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Verse 5, I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. Say that with me. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I need to read that one more time. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes or in leaders. All nations compass me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compass me about. Yes, they compass me about. But in the name of the Lord, now watch as he reiterated that, I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You can be seated this morning. When we look at what is happening today and we look at the threats of other nations and we see what Iran is, is saying to Israel and how that Iran says that, that Israel is nothing more than a little Satan. They're nothing more than cockroaches. And, and they say, we are the exterminators. And we will, we will get rid of Israel. But understand this right here. God's people understand the power of a living God. We understand this right here. That you will not destroy Israel. You will not destroy God's people. Amen. Because God, amen, will be their defender. And so we stand, amen, with this confidence of knowing that when the threats are coming, North Korea said this right here, that if you disrespect us, we're going to start throwing nuclear bombs at you. We find out that all of these Islamic countries are just looking for an excuse, amen, to come against the United States of America. Why is that? Because that we hail forth to every man, woman, every country in the world, that we are still one nation under God. 
We believe that the prayers of our forefathers that went up before him, that they are still right now fresh before the throne of God. I believe that America is blessed because of those that would get on their knees and pray. For those that would stand against the face of evil. Those that would rise up. Those that would say, that understand this right here. It is my time. Amen. I can't rely on what somebody else did. Amen. Before me. I have to stand. It is my time to make a difference. Amen. And so we look at this right here. David was saying, the psalmist was saying this right here. My confidence has to be in the things of God. It has to be in the power of God. God is faithful, amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't understand why God is doing what he's doing. But God knows, amen? He knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. And so we look at this and ask ourselves this question. What is our statement of fear today? What is it? What was our statement when they came out with COVID? And they began to shut the nation down. They began to shut the world down. They isolated ones. There were families going through divorce. We saw where in all this right here that there was chaos everywhere. But what happened was God was saying, if those who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face and pray, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, amen, and confess their sins, he said, then will I hear from heaven, I'm going to forgive their sins and I'm going to heal their nation. We saw in America, there were ones in church that were defiant. It was in California that a young pastor, he said, I, I, I can't tell you. He said that I'm moving in the strength of those that were before me. He said, I can't tell you right now. He said, I'm walking down the same path that they walk. But I can tell you right now. He said, this is my time. This is my time, amen? And what God is saying is, what are you going to do? Are you going to obey and you're going to do what I ask you to do? Or are you going to cower down and you're going to run from the enemy? They came into his service and they told him, they said, listen, we told you to separate. We told you you could not have church. We told you that, listen, we will literally put you in jail. We're going to find everybody in here. He said, let me tell you something. He said, as far as from me in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen, amen. And he said, you need to get back and read the First Amendment, freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And he said, there is not a government, there's not anyone that is powerful enough to stop the voice of God. They said, well, you will not do it in this building. We'll have the building inspectors come. We're going to shut it down, the fire marshal. Oh, wow. You could see the dismay on the people's face. Oh, they're really going to do this? He said, do not fall for it. He said, do not fall for it. You show the joy of the Lord. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to be obedient. Oh, our pastor, I guess he's giving in. I guess he's going to crumble like a cheap cookie. I guess this right here, he's just going to let it happen. But no, what the pastor said was, if we can't have it in church, then we're going to have it outside in the parking lot. They had church outside in the parking lot. They set the chairs six feet apart as they were telling them to space themselves out. And then they had praise and worship up there. And the praise and worship were all spaced apart. They did what they were asked to do, amen. But when they began to praise the Lord, listen to this. When they began to praise the Lord, there's about 100 that showed up. The next Sunday, there was 300 that showed up. This went until they said 2,000 showed up. Praise and worship God out into the open. And they said the praise were going up. There were people that were standing out watching them and, they, and everything. And they were saying, listen, we are so energized because what they're doing, amen, our faith is being strengthened. How can we shut them down? How can we shut them down? Well, understand this right here. If you're on the side of the Lord. As, as we see what the psalmist David said right here. He said, you know what? He said, I, I just got to tell you something. The Lord is on my side. Mm -hmm. I will not fear. Fear is nothing but the beginning of death. Right. It makes you make decisions that are not based on the word of God. It's based on feelings. It's not based on facts. Understand this right here. When you begin to operate in fear, you're going to make decisions you'll regret the rest of your life. And so we find down this right here. The pastor said, you know, I can't tell you everybody's going to go. I cannot tell you who's going to show up out there next Sunday. But I can tell you this right here. I'm going to be there. The word of God's going to be there. Praise and worship's going to be there. And what we're going to do is we are going to continually serve our king. Amen. Amen. 
word began to spread. It got to another pastor. They said, listen, they find the pastor. Actually, he went to jail. And in and, and this right here, the congregation is like, I don't know what to do. So they all, they all ran home and they all just shut down. That pastor said, I might be in jail, but the jail's not in me. Come on, somebody. I might be in jail, but the jail's not in me. I, I, it's kind of like Paul and Silas, amen. I'm here with reason and season. This is my season. And God can take what the devil meant for evil and turn it into his glory. And it's time the church wake up and find out, amen, we're not running from the threats of man, amen, because we stand with the Son of Man. We stand with Jesus Christ. And understand this right here. We know that God is going to take that evil mind, amen. He's going to confuse them. Next thing you know, he's going to be blessing us and not even know he's blessing us amen and the evilness of this world is going to try to figure out what God is doing but they can't figure him out you know why because God will use the foolish things to confuse the wise the Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do unto me you know I, I like what one said you can destroy this body but understand this right here. You cannot destroy the temple of God. Understand this. So as we begin to look, we begin to see what is happening. And right here that we find out that the church says, listen, we're, we're in a dilemma right now. Hear me. They're after our youth. They're after a future generation of leaders. They've invaded the colleges. Stay with me. They've invaded the college with socialism, Marxism, and communism. What happens is they're invading the schools. Even now to where they want the, they want, amen, listen to this right here. First grade through third grade. We want their minds. And what we're going to do is we're going to show them perversion and make them think it's education. And we're going to tell little Jimmy he can be little Janie. We're going to do all this right here. We're, we're going to show we're going to show videos uh, and everything in school and using cartoon characters and everything else. So it becomes normal. There's nothing abnormal about that. But the church, pastors are saying, I'm not going there. I'm not going to bring up transgender. I'm not going to bring up homosexuality and same-sex marriage. I'm not going to bring up abortion. I'm not going to bring up... You know this right here because it's not popular in order for me to have a church in order for me to have a, a congregation amen I've got to be able to please the people well you know when you please the people you displease God that's right and if you can't stand for the truth that means that you fall for a liar you know so we got in the word of God and I want you to hear this in first Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1 and I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Wow. In verse 2, what he said was, I have fed you with milk and not meat, for hitherto you are not able to bear, neither yet now are ye able. He said, and all this right here, he said, I really want to mature you, but you know what? The minute I begin to speak the value of truth, you get an attitude. All of a sudden, you believe more what the naysayers are saying than the Word of God. All of a sudden, you begin to accept what God hates. And you don't want to say anything. You become a silent voice. But how many know that no answer is an answer? And what Paul was saying was this right here. He said, listen, I've got to talk to you. Just because you say three amens or hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, does not mean that you're a mature child of God. That's what I mean. He said, you have to resist. You have to stand strong. And he said, if it even means your reputation, if it means that they're going to come against your finances, they're going to come against your family and everything, he said, you've got to be mature enough that you're going to stand for the value of God's word. Amen. Well, listen to this. Most believers have not been matured by the preachers. That's right. They haven't. That's right. Everything, and let me tell you how immature many times we see this. 
every time that something happens, they're quick to say the devil did it. The devil put that COVID on me. Or the devil put that cancer on me. Or the devil took my child. Or the devil did this. I said, you know what? The devil gets so much recognition, amen. What we ought to say is this right here. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, amen. amen. There are things in this world that are going to happen, amen. And understand this right here. The devil cannot touch God's children when they are under the anointing, the umbrella, amen. The devil says, yeah, I saw them just like Job. And I looked at them, but you had a covering over them. And we are covered by the blood of amen. Jesus Christ. Give him no glory. Give that devil no glory. Oh, oh, you know, devil been all in my house, my children, devil been. How much power have you given the devil? Too much. I don't know about you, but understand this right here. Let's look at the physical, then we'll go to spiritual. The last thing I do at night is I make sure my house is secure. I make sure that I lock the doors. I make sure, amen, everything is set because when I go to bed, amen, in order for you to get in my house, you got to come in as a thief and a robber. And your autopsy will probably say you died of lead poisoning. Uh-huh. I'm old country boy. I sleep with nine millimeters. Come on, somebody. I told I told someone one time. It used to be a time I fight you. I'm old now. I shoot you. Come on. Oh, you can't say that in church. I just did. But listen to me. In the spiritual realm, are we checking the secure? Or security of our heart? See, that's it. Are we making sure that the locks are on? Yes. Not saying, devil, you got free reign, my door's open, you can do anything you want, amen, because I'm going to blame you anyway. No. But say, no, uh uh. Understand this right here. When I, when, you know, when I went through all that I went through and, and being uh, taken out of the military and with my medical and everything else, I didn't say the devil did it. Uh -uh. I had to look and say, what is your purpose, God, for this right here? Why Why are you moving me out of the military? Here I'm about to advance. Here I am, you know, in the, in the prime, amen, of my life, in the military and everything else. And, and all of a sudden, we think you might have bone cancer. Yeah, the doctor was treating you. He overdosed me with steroids. Took out both my hips, my shoulders, my knees. They said, we think you got bone cancer. Now, I'm not going to lie. It paralyzed my mind for about 30 seconds. I fell back in the chair. I couldn't even think. But then I remembered, the Lord is on my side. Come on, somebody. I will not fear. Yes. For what can man do unto me? And Doc looked at me and this is what he said. He said, your military career is over. Putting you on a P4 profile. I said, Doc, don't do that. I got to. I said, okay. Went home, told my wife. I'm tore up, man. I'm married to the army. I used to tell them, I'm married to the army and she's my mistress. You cut me, I bleed green all over you. Yeah. Hallelujah. My wife used to always tell me all the time, I'm not your private. I said, that's fine. Just go ahead and move and get it done. But in this right here, I said, listen, we prayed not my will be done, but thy will be done in this situation as it is in heaven. Amen. I've got to understand this. I'm not going to weep and cry. I don't want to know. Amen. Come on. That, that pity uh, pool, I drained that a long time ago. Amen. There is no swimming in the pity pool. Don't send out invitations for pity because I don't take them. God, what are you going to do? 
Go down to Brooks down near San Antonio. Go through all the tests, MRIs, go through everything. Doc walks in and he says, I got some good news and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Uh, give me the bad news. He said, the bad news is all your joints are destroyed. <laughs> all right, give me the good news. The good news is we might be able to save one. Hey, one better than none. That's okay. He said, we're going to do a core decompression. Now, God, you're doing this in a path, and I know that I ought to be questioning you. I, I, I know that there are many that would say, oh, oh God, I, I served you, and I've done this, and I've done that. And, oh, God, will you allow me to do No, no, understand this right here. God's got a plan, but I've got to understand it. They took me in. They did an operation on my left hip. They drill holes in the femur. And then it tries to generate growth. But what happened was, 30 days after they had done this, a medical review came out and said, don't do bone core uh, decompression because it don't work. Then stop. I said, but Lord, okay, how, how's this going to work? Because... I had so much pain in, the, in my left hip right there from the drilling and everything else, and I couldn't hardly walk and, and everything. And I said, Lord, what is this? And, and, and he said, just have faith in God. Have faith. I can't see what you're doing, Lord. I can't see it. The evil mind's a man. Now watch this. Some of my soldiers, amen, I was ministering to, and they got saved. Marriages being restored. And I'm seeing all this happening. But how many know this right here? I know the enemy was trying to fight. But also I know this right here. That man in his own wisdom seems foolish before God. It's okay. I'll advance this up. I end up out of the military. And I end up... We go back to Tennessee. We're going back to our home, Tennessee. And during this time, Sister Peggy's mom, she, she is diagnosed with cancer. And she's failing. And so we moved back into our house there. And they had just totally wrecked it. And you know, the renter's been in and out of it. And so here I am putting everything back together and, you know, uh, having to rip out carpet and re-sand down the cabinets and, oh, it was a mess. But we took her mama in. We were able to care for her all the way to within, I think it was two days, maybe three days before she died. Mighty woman of God, mighty woman of God. I said, okay, Lord. I said, I can see now where you brought us here, amen, that what we could do is take care of her mother. We could make sure all this is done and everything. And so we were in the church and, and giving God glory and praise, amen, and, and helping support the ministry and the pastor. And, and then we ended up, uh, you know, just going different uh, churches and helping them out. And God says, now it's time to move. My wife came up and she said, we're going back to Texas. I said, no, we're not. I don't like Texas. Y'all have trees, but they put wires on them, call them telephone poles. I said, I want real trees, Tennessee trees, mountains. Walk outside my door. We, we had over 100 acres. Walk outside the door there with my 30 out six, shoot a nice deer, have venison that night. Come on, I'm talking real. Squirrel dumplings. Some of y'all, I ain't never eaten no squirrel dumplings. Come on. Hallelujah. I mean, this to me, this to me is heaven on earth. Hallelujah. I was even, I, and I share this, some of y'all watching, you're like, oh man, this boy is redneck. No, I'm just in this right here. That was just from the sun. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway, I had, a, I had a guy come over, and he said, hey, listen, you're not going to believe this, but I shot, I shot this raccoon last night, and I went ahead and, you know, I took its head off and cleaned it all up if you want. I said, barbecue time. The Lord provides. Everybody, yeah. I took that. I, listen to me. I got to share this. 
I took that raccoon, I got me some real heavy aluminum foil. I put me a pound of butter in there, and I put me some seasoning in there. I wrapped it up, put it on the, on the grill, and I, I put it on there for about four hours. Undid that, undid that aluminum foil. I pulled all the bone out. Listen to me. I pulled all the bone out. And then I went and browned it. So it had a little bit of, anybody know what I'm talking about? Had that little crispy brown on the outside. Put a little hot sauce on it. I made up sandwiches and here come the kids. And nobody was around when I was doing this. I said, we got barbecue sandwiches. And they're like, oh, man, they were eating it. I mean, grease running down their mouth. They were just happy as they could be, except for my oldest son. He said, don't never eat anything that you didn't see Daddy fix. They said, he'll cook anything. All the rest of them said, man, that's the best barbecue I have eaten everything else. And they said, what is it? I said, it's barbecue raccoon. They said, man, is there another one? You see, what happens is sometimes, amen, watch it. Sometimes we go against something that we've never tried. And find out that when we did, it was so good. God says, I've got some things prepared for you. He said, you're going to go, what's this? I've never done that. Oh, they're talking about over here, you know, uh, a church that is over here, you know, speaking in tongues, laying hands upon the sick. I've never done that. I don't want any part of that. God says, understand this for you. The way I've got it fixed up and the way that I am presenting it, he says, understand that. I want you just to try it. See, that was me. I want you just to try it. I don't want to be around crazy people. Come on, somebody. Been a drill sergeant, been all this, and I, I'm in there, and I got people shouting and screaming, and I'm already got PTSD and Vietnam and everything else, and I'm like, oh, I can't stand this right here. And God's saying, listen, just try it. But you know what? They had something I didn't. I had religion. They had a relationship. I was doing things, amen. Watch this. I was nothing more than a spiritual robot. Everybody lift your hand. Everybody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the way I was. Everything. And then when that, when that hand went up on 12 o'clock, if that preacher wasn't done preaching, they were looking for another preacher. But then when I got into a spirit-filled ministry, I said, man, there's something about that. And I was like, I'm really feeling this. I'm like, Lord, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't be crazy now. You know, I just talk real. I said, I can't be crazy. You're not going to see me running around doing cartwheels, you know, and everything. No, that's not me. No. I'm real. And I said, but, but watch this right here. I said, if, if we lay hands upon the sick, the word of God says they shall recover. If we anoint them with oil, pray the prayer of faith over them. If they have committed sins, it will be forgiven them. Yeah. I said, my God, this is powerful. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I haven't done that before, but I'm telling you, I'm willing to try. Come on. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. So God brings me into a spirit-filled church. They're in Copper's Cove. Come on. Yeah. I walk in. With the family and pastor and stuff. And pastor says, where are you coming from? I told him. And I said, what do you need here at the church? I said, what's the need of the church? How many have ever come into a church and said, what's the need? Remember that, Brother Matt? What's the need? Because when you see a need, that means you're seen. That's the reason we got him for a praise and worship leader. He came in and he said, what's the need? And we had gone through praise and worship leaders and they were like popcorn, man. When they were hot, they were popping, but when they weren't, they were out. <laughs> Brother Max said, you want me to sing? I didn't, I didn't know anything about him. The only thing I know was, you know, was Joe. He was a little on the crazy side, you know. And, and so I was like, whoa, I'm going to have to back off from this boy a little while because he's too close to that one, okay? I'm serious. 
but we'll let him try to sing. I thought, I'll probably regret this, but go ahead. <laughs> God says, it's his season. Amen. I said, okay. He got up and sang. I didn't want to tell him. I was like, you ain't going nowhere, boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is your season. This is your purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. But the reason I'm saying this is because when he came in, he came in as to what is the need of the church. Instead of what can you do for me? Is there anything I can do for the church? Been here ever since. Even got delivered, didn't you? <laughs> Praise God. But listen, we've come to the place today where in most ministries, we're asking, what can the ministry do for us? Instead of coming in and saying, you know what? What can I do? First Sunday, I was at the church I was talking about. Little boy, you know how little boys are. Man, they live to clog up a commode. They live for that. <laughs> there was water running out the door. You see little boys out there that day. <laughs> the pastor said, roll up your pants. He said, there's a mop in a bucket. Go, go mop up the, the boys' bathroom. Told them to go ahead and get seated. I went in there, rolled up my pants, and got it all unstopped. Got the water mopped up and everything. And after church, you would have thought he would have come and said, Hey, good job. He walked right by me just like I was yesterday's news. Now, some people would have, some people would have got upset and left the church. Oh, I did all this, and he didn't even recognize me? You know why? Because he knew that the blessings come from God, amen. If man blesses you, it can stop the blessing of God on you. Next Sunday, excuse me, I said, yes, sir. He said, we're an usher short. Can you usher? I said, yes, sir. So I usher. We got done. They went up to count. And I started and they said, where are you going? I said, well, I figured, no, you go sit down. You're not on the count team. Somebody would have got all the feelings hurt. Oh, my God. They don't even recognize my calling. Go sit down. So I went and sit down. Enjoyed it. But listen, what I'm trying to say is this right here. Is we have become, amen, so thin-skinned that any time our feelings get hurt, we start running. We start going the other direction. But the psalmist David is saying this right here. But if the Lord is on your side, amen. Hallelujah. Come on. If the Lord is on your side, do not fear man. Amen. Come on. Stand with the purpose and the power of God. And for 30 years, we have seen the purpose and the power of God. We've seen it in the valley. We've seen it in the mountains. We've seen it, amen, as we've gone forth. And understand this, right? that's the reason that today, when we're seeing society and all of the chaos and all of this right here, we shall not be moved. No. No, we won't. That's the reason I'm, I'm preaching this message today. Because you are at the right time, the right season, the right gift, the right gender, everything right about what God is wanting to do. Don't try to change anything. Let God move. Let God move. Because I'm going to tell you something. Darkness only gives way to light. That's all. If you're in the store, you put that smile. I don't care what you're going through. You put that smile on your face because God's got you there to minister to somebody. Amen. When you're there, oh, well, I'm here to, uh, I got my grocery list. Well, I got my spiritual list too. And somebody here, amen, is my target. And I'm just going to wait. And, oh, boy, I'm feeling it. There they are. And so what happens is I can say this right here. Hey, how are you doing? Everything doing okay? Yeah, I can tell you're down. You're going through depression, aren't you? And listen, they open up like a double door. All of a sudden, all this betrayal comes out. All this hurt comes out. Next thing you know, I mean, 
You, you're their therapist. But what you're saying is, I know a man who can. I know a man who can take everything that has been sent against you away. I know a man that can take depression away. His name is Jesus Christ. We were at Golden Corral up in Waco, and it seemed like we go up there every Friday. I, I just, I love the place. But it's, it's more than that. It's a ministry. I got her food better all set up. I walk and this guy stops me. He says, hey. He saw my Vietnam hat on. We got talking. But how do you know this? It went into ministry. We went in talking about the goodness of God. And then see, you know, I told him, I said, you know, we, we shared some different things in church and everything. And I said, well, you know, one thing, I have a little bit to say about it in our church. He goes, really? I said, yeah, I'll know that. And he said, well, you know, hope your pastor listens. <laughs> I said, he don't. He don't. I said, you can't tell him anything. I said, the only thing he keeps saying is, well, this is what the Lord showed me. He said, well, that's a good pastor. I said, well, he's pretty good now. I, I said, yeah. And so we talked a few more moments, and I said, oh, by the way, I was getting ready to go get some." I said, oh, by the way, I am the pastor. I started walking away, and he said, me too. <laughs> but when him and his wife got ready to leave, Amen. they had been so rejuvenated. Revived. And they had been through some hard, hard times. But now they're laughing. Now what they're seeing is they allowed the enemy to control their feelings. They allowed the enemy to be able to dictate their travel. Where we're going. How we're feeling. All this right here. And this is what he said. When we get back to church Sunday. He said when we get back to church Sunday. There's going to be a different service. We're going to let the Holy Spirit move. Yeah. And I told him, I said, understand this right here. If the Holy Spirit's not in the service, get out. Because all you're doing is congregating, amen. And, and this right here says nothing but a social gathering. Yeah. But listen to me, church. Don't put, don't put God in a box. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what he's doing, that's okay. But keep following him. Amen. Keep on going. He'll bring you through the Red Sea of life. He'll bring you across that Jordan. He'll bring you past those Jericho walls. He's going to bring you past all that right there into the promise of his word. But you've got to be willing to meet him in every single destination he has for you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't give up. Just stand and say, who is man? Who is man that he can take my faith away from God. Who is man that can dictate my life and watch and see what God does? You brag on God? Let me tell you something. He'll be so quick to move, but don't complain to God because the complaint department down there, up here is the praise department. Praise him for everything you're going through and praise him for what he's going to do. Because I'm going to tell you something, 2023, that's going to be a year for me. Amen. That's what you got to say. Is This is my year. Yes. This is my year. Anybody? Amen. This is my year. Come on. Yes. This is my year. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley and shout death, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me as you are on your staff that comforts me. Amen. Hallelujah. This is my year. Healing is this year. Amen. Transformation is this year. Hallelujah. This is my year. Bow your hands with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that it was, it was Jesus that said, this is my year. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. We all have been told, take up your cross and follow me. It's not, Lord God, that we complain about. Thank you, Lord God, that we have a cross. Thank you that, Lord God, that we have situations that, Lord God, that are going to involve right now faith. That means in this right here, we've got, we've got to trust you. It means you're bringing us through. Yes. 
And we thank you for that. And I thank you that, Lord God, each and every one that's watching right now, no matter what they're going through, family, uh, we're seeing this, it could be on the job, could be in the school. It could be dealing right now with situations that just seem so bad that uh, they just begin to wonder, could God even move in it? Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. God will take and change the minds, amen, of ones that have been out against you, out trying to get you. God can change their minds when they turn around and begin to bless you. Get yourself ready. Walk in faith. Amen. Get out of that house. Yeah. Get out of it. Yeah. Get to the house of God. Get around God's people. Get around those that are positive. Stray away from those that are negative. Pray for them, but you don't have to enjoy them. Let this be your year. Yes. 2023, this is a year for me. Now, Father, we give you glory and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. amen and amen. Give him glory and praise. Amen. Get ready to go serve your king. Don't forget next Sunday, 10 o'clock. We're starting early, 10 o'clock. Amen. Get the word out. Get your family here. We are going to have a healing service. Amen. Uh, we're going to be praying at the altar. Get yourself, when you come in, amen, then it's not time to come in and get prayed up. It's the time to be prayed up, then come in. Hallelujah. God bless you and we love you. Amen. Don't forget Tuesday night, light and prayer.